Okay. All right. So if you remember last time, we were creating a, a um, internet connection or internet speed conversion tool with the idea that sometimes, uh, um, uh, sometimes the the consumer when they're buying internet when it's 10 megabits per second, 20 megabits per second, whatever it is, uh, doesn't have a uh, a real clear idea of what that actually means in terms of values that make sense to them. Something like that. So last time we, we started off creating, uh, we talked about a few things. We started off with our first interface uh, activity, um, uh, I'm sorry, interface controller here uh, on screen number one that basically shows a picker with all the number of megabits per second between one and I think a thousand. We can double check that here. Yep, one and a thousand. Uh, and then it shows all those. So the idea is you go through, you select one of those. We're kind of introducing the picker widget, the WK picker uh, picker item, uh, WK interface picker rather. That is a uh, um, basically something you used a little digital crown on the uh, Apple Watch to kind of go through and, and pick something up. Then you hit go, and then we talked about various ways of getting information from this first screen onto this second screen. First piece of information, the first way we do that is through this thing called the context, and uh, we looked at that. Uh, then the second way, which I prefer, is uh, through this thing called uh, a singleton. So what I did here is I created this thing called converter core, and up in converter core, all we did is we stored one piece of information called the message. All right, so... You know, a singleton, super, super easy. All it is is a generic NS object that we just happen to put some static variables inside of. That way we can access it from anywhere uh, throughout the entire application. All right. So if we look at this right now, we'll go ahead and hit uh, hit play here. Our uh, watch app will, uh, will launch. And I realize it's maybe a little bit small on the screen here. I don't know. Can I make it any bigger? Uh, let's see. Window. Scale. Nope. Doesn't look like it. So I guess just deal. Uh, I'm on a 5K iMac, so it's you know, it looks beautiful on my side. So, so in any case, you know, we'll select nine megabits per second with the hope that when we hit the go button, it'll show us the next screen, and that next screen is going to have all the different conversions on it for moving uh, for nine megabits per second in terms of bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes. All right, just to kind of give us kind of a breakdown. So I'll go ahead and hit go. And at this point, what are we doing? When we hit that button, just as a review, uh, we'll go back into our code here. Let me just kill this. Uh, and we'll go into our interface controller.swift. This was that default guy. So every single time our picker uh, view changed, what we're going to do is we're going to update that megabits per second in our message. Okay. So that at, at the moment when we actually click that button, which has a segue that leads us to that second screen, this guy, okay, when we click this button, it's going to take us here to the second screen. Now, right now, the second screen, uh, we get to right here. Uh, here is that screen. He has an identifier of conversion IC. All right. That's what his identifier is. So if we go back into our code here and just look at the, the various ways we can get over there, when we hit the go button as of right now, what did we do? We went ahead and we pushed that controller with a name, conversion IC, and right now we're passing it no context. So let me go ahead and give it a quick context just as a review. So this is how we inject data into the next interface controller. All right. So when we manually push a view controller with a name, so we happen to name it in our storyboard conversion IC, we're going to go ahead and we're going to push that controller with that name, passing it the context. So this is the ability that we have to send information from one interface controller to another interface controller. Even though, as I mentioned last time, my preferred way of doing this is through the singleton. I just find it to be very, very convenient, and hopefully you'll agree with me here in a second when we're able to take this entire IB action out. Okay? So, I'm going to go and we're going to go ahead and uh, run this. But before we do that, let's go to that second screen. So here's our conversion IC. So this is the uh, uh, code behind we wrote for that second screen, and this guy has a label on it, but notice here in Awake with Context, 
he gets a context as a parameter. Okay, we're not using it right now, but I'm going to go ahead and print it out just so we see what we got. So I'm going to print out context. And we're going to see that context is actually that message that we just sent from the first screen. Okay, so I call this injection. We're injecting a value from screen one into screen two. So I'll go ahead, we'll select something here. I'll hit my go button and we see optional. This is how we inject data into the next interface controller, proving that we are able to push information from the first screen to the second screen. Okay, but by using that singleton, especially with the picker view, every single time we moved the digital crown on the, on the watch, that global variable was updating in real time. Okay, and if you remember correctly, we defaulted it to one when the application first started in case they never actually uh, did anything. Actually, I thought we defaulted it to one. Uh, let's see, did we default it to one maybe in view did load? We did not. Well, we probably should have done that. So <laughs> let me go ahead and default that guy to one for us, just so if we don't actually touch, because let me just show you why. Right now, if we don't actually touch the picker, and I hit go, it's NA, because we never actually got that value, uh, value moved. Okay, but the picker is sitting on one by default. So let's go ahead and make our converter core default to one megabits per second, as if we had already selected one. All right, so now even if we don't touch anything, when we click that go button, it'll take us to that second screen. And there we are, one megabit per second. Okay, so we're getting information across there. But right now, in order to get to that second screen, we are actually writing an IB action for this go button. Okay, um, and that, so, but what I'm going to do, and so we see here we have this, uh, here's our go button, that's our IB action hooked up to it. I'm actually gonna do a control click over to this guy, and we're gonna push that. So now there is no IB action. In fact, I'll go in here to our uh, um, interface controller guy here, and I'm gonna go ahead and dump that go, pre uh, uh, go button pressed. Okay, we no longer need that okay? because we don't actually have to interject anything because we're letting the digital crown along with our singleton handle all that information being updated in the, in the quote unquote cloud so that when we get to that second screen, what are we looking at? When we get to that second screen, we already have that value. All right, so I'm no longer going to print out the context. We'll just get a nil value because we're not actually passing a context. But we're going to still have our converter core message because this guy was set every single time we changed the picker on the first screen. Go ahead and prove that. So now we're able to navigate between screens with just a little drag and drop. So there's that guy. We'll hit go. And there's the 21 megabits. Okay, so nothing changed, but we didn't, nothing changed functionally, but we didn't have to write the code to actually. Uh, push that second screen. All right, so now what we decided we were going to do is on this uh, second screen, we're going to learn about how to work with table views. All right, so on the second screen, what we'd like to see is we'd like to see um, a, a table view with four elements in it. Uh, each of these elements is going to have the number of bytes, megabytes, uh, or bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes for the conversion for 21 megabits to kind of put it into some sort of term that you know maybe a human being might understand. Realistically, most of us today are gonna to understand kilobytes and uh, kilobytes per second and megabytes per second in terms of translating it into how fast are we actually downloading something, okay? Um, you know, so if our faster internet connections, it's not uncommon for us to see two or three or four or five megabytes per second download, even though a lot of us translate that internet speed of 30 or 40 or 50 megabits per second into megabytes in our mind. So we want to see where that translation actually occurs. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to build a table view into the second guy. So we'll go into our storyboard. And here's that second guy here, and I think I've already put my group in there. Let me just confirm that. Yep, here's my group. 
All right, and my group should be vertical. Yep, so I always started off with a vertical group, so there's that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw my table view in there. So that's this guy right here, he's a table. And he's gonna show up as just a single row, all right? And um, so now that table, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put the table inside the group. I think I mentioned last time that sometimes you can't quite get it organized by just dropping it in there. We're dealing with a fairly small screen. Uh, so actually, for those of you who are Android developers, there's a lot more overlap here than there was in um, uh, kind of previous uh, languages. Uh, just for my own sanity here, I want to make sure that I am sharing my screen, and I am. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I thought I wasn't. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and design our table row. Okay. And what we want to have in here, we want to have two labels. One label that's going to have the kind of what it is. Uh, bytes per second, kilobytes per second, megabytes per second, or gigabytes per second. And then the other label is going to be the actual value for the conversion. Okay, and this is actually pretty nice the way this works with uh, um, uh, WatchKit. So I'm going to come in here into uh, our extension where all our other code is. And I'm going to right click and we're going to say new file. And we're going to go to WatchKit, WatchKit class. And this guy is going to be just a plain Jane NS object, and we're going to co we're going to call this guy a, um, um, a, a let's just call him a row. Okay, this is going to be our, our our row class. Okay, we'll go ahead and add that to our project. All right, so now we have this row class, and he's just a plain Jane NS object. So now what we're going to do here is I'm going to go I'm going to drag this up top here just so it's kind of with our other pieces of code. Um, and that way I can find it more easily. Uh, it's been a long day. I've been here since 7.30 in the morning. I'm going to be here until 10.30 at night teaching. So um, the easier I can make it to myself, the better. All right, so now I'm going to go into our uh, interface uh, storyboard. So we're back here. And now we need to let our uh, table know that he's actually something a little bit different. So instead of him being a generic NS object, we're actually going to make him a row. Well, let's just type it in. Okay, so there's our row. So now this guy is a row, no longer a generic NS object. That means we now programmatically can do things related to this guy, okay? And notice this guy automatically has a group associated with him, and that's group I usually set up as horizontal. Let's see if it's defaulted to that. It is, so layout is horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a label in here. And we'll go ahead and default our label to say bytes per second and then some number just so we can kind of see how it lays out. So I'll go ahead and throw that guy in there, and um, we're going to give a size to this dude. So when we click on the label, click on our inspector up here, we're going to set the width to relative to container, and this is a percent, okay? So we're going to set the percent of this guy to uh, 67%, all right? And then height is going to be relative to the container. Oh no, actually, hold on, I lied to you about the uh, uh, the width. The width is going to be fixed at 67%. And then the height is gonna be relative to the container so it fills out the container, okay? So, and then we're gonna go ahead and just put some text in this guy. So let's say this is uh, 132, just for a placeholder, okay? Now we're gonna put another label out here, put it next to this guy. And we're going to set this guy's width to be fixed. And we're going to have this be the last 33% of the container. And similarly, we're going to have it be relative to the container for height. Hold on a second, I thought this was a percent. Am I just being goofy? Sounds like I'm being goofy. Um, okay, so let's then set this guy as being right uh, for his alignment. And then we'll have this guy, instead of being a fixed width, let's have it be size to, uh, let's see, relative to container. Will that push it? I will, but that's still not kind of what we want. Now, for the sake of argument here, let's just, uh, then we put uh, megabytes per second in there so we know how big that's going to be. 
and then we'll go ahead and stretch that out till we get it in there so then the rest of this guy can go right up butt up against that all right so we'll just design the sizes there for that for right now you can mess around with it within the interface for some reason i really thought it was um uh, uh percent i wonder if something changed there or maybe i'm just being wonky all right let's go ahead and make the text alignment in there also be to the right um, just so we kind of see it right next to it. So it'll look something along those lines, okay, for our uh, for our data. Um, now we need to go ahead and hook those guys up as IB outlets into our row. All right, so since this guy is already one of these row dudes, I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. And uh, let's see, I think if I click on this, it's not going to bring up the row, is it? It is not, it brings up the converter core, that's fine. So I need to go and find my row, so there's a row there. A little bit inconvenient, but not the end of the world. Uh, and now that I have that, in theory, okay, that's just weird, why can't I kick that stuff down? Well, I'm gonna do control click into here, and we'll go ahead and insert this outlet, and this is going to be our speed label. Okay, and we'll go ahead and connect that. So that'll put that in there. And uh, yeah, it's not showing up over there for a second, but I think it'll show up once we finish this. And then this guy is going to be the um, uh, the rate label. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And I think there's something wrong with the preview thing there for a second. So go into Swift. There's our two outlets, and of course, it kind of threw them in the wrong place. The interface wasn't updating. Xcode probably needs a little bit of a restart, but we'll just roll with it for right now. All right, so we went ahead and we connected both of those guys. So we have two outlets, uh, rate speed and speed label, or rate label and speed label, rather, uh, that connect to those uh, uh, dudes in our, uh, uh, our row. Okay, so now, a moment here. Uh, we need to go ahead and give ourselves access to the uh, uh, to our table uh, programmatically. So we're going to go back out into our storyboard, and this part should work. So I'll go ahead and click on this, and we'll click here. And now I'm going to click and drag our table into this guy. Oh, it came as a label. It's because I let's just do it from row here. So we'll do a command drag here. Oh, sorry. Control drag. And we'll give us over our outlet, and this is a WK interface table, so we're going to call this guy the table, and this is inside a conversion IC. All right, so now we have programmatic access to that guy, and we're going to go ahead and set him up inside of uh, Awake with context. So he starts filling in with stuff. All right, and keep in mind the label and stuff we have on here now is just a placeholder. All right, so I'm going to go back here. And again, that was an example of sometimes you can't grab what you need to from the picture part over here, so you sometimes have to grab it over here from the left-hand side. Uh, that gives us the scene. Uh, it's just a, kind of a thing that doesn't happen very often on iPhone, but as we get to these smaller screen sizes, it's something that I've run into that actually happens fairly often. All right, so now we have access to our table in here. So uh, we're, go we're, we're already setting our label equal to the message. That's the number of things we're converting. Uh, so now we want to go ahead and set our uh, table uh, to have some number of rows, okay? So we're going to say self dot the table dot uh, set, uh, what is it? Set number of rows, I think, set number of rows and the number of rows for this guy is we're just going to hard code it in there um you know well actually you know we're not going to hard code it in here we're gonna we're going to be good programmers so we're going to go ahead and say let um rates equal create a little array here so we'll say bytes per second megabytes per second oops sorry about that Except before megabytes comes kilobytes. I'm killing myself here. Kilobytes per second. Megabytes per second. And finally, gigabytes per second. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. 
That's our rates, and then we're going to go ahead and use rates here. So we'll say rates.count, and the row type is called row. Okay, and let me show you where that row type links up. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to change it to just be called a row here. That way, we don't convince it, we don't uh, confuse it with our row class. All right, so I'm going to go back out to our uh, interface storyboard. And we're going to go to uh, our table. All right, and we can set some number of prototype rows here. Um, but let's see, we need to go into so this guy. Yep, so we click on our row guy here. And then underneath that, in the inspector, we have an identifier for this guy, and we're going to call him a row, just so we don't get uh, confused on uh, the, the different things. So we're going to go ahead and say this guy is not selectable, because we're not going to have a need to make him selectable to get to the next screen and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So we'll uh, leave it at that. Uh, so now that we named that guy a row, and he's, his code behind is something called row, now I can come in here, so let's just make sure that everything still stayed copacetic. Yep, so his class is row, and his identifier is a row. Usually you would probably just name the class something more specific than row, but whatever, we didn't do that. So we'll come back in here. So that's why we called it a row here. So we're going to go ahead and set the number of rows for our table equal to rates.count, which should be four, and each one is going to be one of our a rows. Okay. Then we're going to go through and we're going to loop through each one of our uh, um, uh, elements in our uh, in rates. So we're going to say for uh, var rate in rates. All right, and so you know, is that not how we do it in here? Uh, I think maybe parentheses aren't used for that syntax in Swift. Okay, yep. So uh, so for rate and rates, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say uh, uh, let row equal uh, self dot the table dot row well, the, the label the table dot row controller at index and the index is going to be oh we actually need the index so going through this in rates is a waste all right sorry about that so if our i is equal to zero i is less than rates dot count i plus plus all right so now the row controller we're going to want is going to be row i and we're going to get this guy as a row Okay, which is the name of our class, our row class. Okay, so we have that. Uh, now, what we're going to go ahead and do, well, what's this guy upset about? Didn't we name it row? We did name it row. Oh, it's probably not going to be thrilled with that. Call it that. All right. So we're going to let a row equal to this guy. I can't have my variables name. I really chose a very poor name for my class. Is the real issue here? I should have probably called that like a conversion row or something like that. But we'll just let our variable name be a row here, and he's going to be equal to the current row in our table, and we'll convert that to a generic row object from this dude that we built over here. That's the row we're talking about. That the dude that has two IB outlets in him. Okay. So now we'll come in here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to set, um, let's just set the label for the, uh, the speed equal to like five, just as a hard coded value for right now. And let's set the, uh, um, the, the rates equal to what comes out of rates. So we're going to say a row dot, um, let's see, what is it? Speed, speed label dot set text. And it's just killing me here. Okay. Uh, set text, 
And the text we're going to set this guy to for right now is 5 for the speed, just because that's what we're doing for a placeholder. And then a row dot rate label dot set text. And the text we're going to do for this one is going to be rates at position i. Okay, and that guy's going to already come out as a string. Okay, so we're going to go through and we're going to go ahead and fill up our table with all of those rows. And uh, we kind of should be good to go. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and run this, and we'll see what that second screen looks like now. So first screen, we'll go ahead and select our megabits. So there, we're at 36 megabits. We'll hit go, 36 megabits up top, and then now we have these four rows, bits per second, kilobyte, uh, bytes per second, kilobytes per second, megabytes per second, and gigabytes per second, all hard-coded to five. So now we need to actually do our conversion based on the number of megabits, okay? So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our conversion. So converter core dot the message is currently uh, equal to the speed, but with the word megabits after it. We can split it on a space or something like that. But what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go back to our first screen here. Um, actually, I think, aren't I just saying, let me check something here real quick. It says megabits per second there. Let me look at my converter core. Okay, so I'm gonna take out the megabits per second there in converter core. Similarly, inside of interface controller, we're gonna take out the megabits per second there. So all we're gonna do is hold that number up there. Actually didn't need to store it as a string, but we already did, so I'll teach you how to convert a string back to an int. Uh, reasonable enough skill. Uh, we can certainly go and change this, but that might be a handy thing for you to learn anyways. So I'll come back in here now to our conversion IC, and now when we're setting our uh, text for this dude, we're going to actually set the text equal to here's our placeholder. All right, so it'll be converter core, the message, followed by a space, followed by the word megabit per second thing. Okay, so now we get the value over there the same way as it was before, except now we have just the number we can work with. All right, so now we need to start doing our conversions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to create a uh, let speeds be equal to... Um, we're going to have an array we're going to fill up here for bits per second, kilobytes per, or bytes per second, kilobytes per second, megabytes per second, and gigabytes per second. So I'm going to go ahead and start our base speed. Um, so we're going to say let base speed equal the integer version of converter, converter core dot the message. All right, so that'll go ahead and convert that for us. Uh, so now we have a number, okay? And what we need to do is we need to get that number into bytes per second, kilobytes per second, megabytes per second, and gigabytes per second. So for speeds, we're going to go ahead and say, for bytes per second, this is base speed divided by 8 gets us to megabytes per second, all right? times 1,024 gets us to kilobytes, times 1,024 gets us to bytes. Then base speed divided by 8 times 1,024, that gets us kilobytes. Then base speed divided by 8 gets us megabytes. Then base speed divided by 8 divided by 1,024 gets us to gigabytes. Okay. So that is those guys. Uh, value option not. Oh, I think we could just do this and that should fix it. Um, okay, so uh, the, the issue here is, is that when we convert a string to an int, we are not guaranteed to get a value. So this guy technically comes out of here as an optional, which is a special swift thing that was designed to make our lives miserable. Uh, so I got, went ahead and used the exclamation point uh, here, and that just says, trust me, there's a value in there that, that is convertible. So now we filled up this array with all of our speeds, so now we can use that value down here. Instead of saying 5, we'll go ahead and set the text equal to the string that contains the placeholder that is speeds at position i. 
All right, so now this should give us the right value, but what we're gonna notice here is that we're gonna have some uh, rounding issues. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. And we'll go ahead and select uh, 48 megabits per second. We'll hit go, it takes us over to this screen. So we get 48 megabits per second is the top speed. This is uh, six, whatever, some giant number of bytes per second. 6,144 kilobytes per second, six megabits per second, and then we have zero gigabytes per second. All right, and the issue here is, is that we're actually doing integer division here. Well, we don't really want zero gigabytes per second. We want whatever that fraction of a uh, gigabyte per second is. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna actually convert our value instead of to an int to a double, so we're working with doubles there. All right, and then we're gonna always divide by 8.0. This will at least force the issue for us. Okay, keep it in the format we're interested in. So now that division will be treated as floating point division instead of integer division. So again, we'll go ahead and select something. All right, so now we have some real value for gigabytes per second, but notice it trails off. So the reality is we might wanna say, let's do um, three decimal points, something like that, or four decimal points. Maybe that makes the most sense. Uh, I think I remember how to do this. This actually is something that came from the old C language with printf when we had placeholders, uh, where we can say uh, percent point two f that kind of thing. Um, same thing exists here with strings. So I think if I say, is it dot? Let's see here. I want to make sure I give you the right. Let me just look it up here real quick. I think it's like an NS string format, something like that. So really it's a decent thing to, to kind of have in your your wheelhouse. All right. Okay, yeah, it's string. So it's the string constructor that actually allows us to do this. So I'm gonna steal this guy here real quick. And we're gonna actually construct a brand new string here. And one of the constructors allows us to uh, um, give it a format. And the format we're going to go ahead and give this guy is a percent point four F, let's say. All right, that way we'll have four decimal places. And the arguments that we're gonna give this guy is that dude. Yeah, the dude we were already working with. All right, so this should finish our string guy there. So we need one more closing guy there. All right. I think that should do it. Do not subscript a value type double. I've become lost. Okay, one moment here. All right, so the arguments for our, uh, oh, we actually don't put an argument in this one. I just selected the wrong constructor thing. So this guy is just speeds at bucket I, and that should give us the value. Okay, there we go. I grabbed the wrong constructor. So this is one of the string constructors that allows us to build a string out of this value, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're going to embed that value, which is a float, so this guy is a float. We're embedding him inside of this formatted string. And this formatted string is um, percent, point four says four decimal places, F says float. So those of you who came from Objective-C, this would be string with format. Okay, that's the equivalent here. Those of you who came from uh, older languages, well, Java actually has a format thing as well, but in um, C, it's printf and scanf. They both use the same type of uh, formatting syntax, so that's, it came from a really, really, really old language. So those of you who took my uh, uh, Evolution of Languages workshop, uh, you would have seen that we actually have, uh, um, you know, we're seeing evidence here in a brand new spanking language Swift that's only been out for a year and a half or so that we're seeing stuff left over from 1968 in the C programming language. Okay, 
So now we should have four decimal places there. Go ahead and run this. Go ahead and select our megabits per second. Hit go. And now we have this guy up to four decimal places. Okay, which actually broke stuff up here because it wasn't, uh, we didn't actually have any decimal places up there uh, initially. So, um, yeah, we actually need this rounded at least a little bit. Uh, so let's do point 0.2 and see if that will give us, if there's some value in there where it'll fit on our labels. Otherwise, we just have to screw around with font size and things like that. But we'll just say it's good enough here in a second. All right, well, prob probably okay. Let's just say that's good enough, I guess. We can sit here and screw around with it. Um, okay, so now, right now, our rows are not selectable. Okay, so what we can do here is we go back out to our storyboard just to kind of show you what could come next is we can go ahead and click on a row, and we'll go ahead and allow him to be selectable, and we'll go ahead and run this guy again. All right, and we'll just select something, hit go. Now these rows are actually clickable, okay? And so how do we handle row clicks is the, uh, uh, the question that we want to answer here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at overriding a method for did select row. All right, and we're going to kind of show how that works. So this particular guy... Uh, interface controllers come with all these methods that are kind of callback methods that exist inside the language. So we're going to go inside our conversion IC and we'll just come right before will activate. And we're going to go ahead and override a method, func. And I'm just going to hit tab. Actually, I'm going to hit escape here. And that's going to kind of show me all the methods that I can override. All right. And we're looking for a method that starts with the word table. And here's the one, did select row at index. So we'll go ahead and select that guy. Okay. So this guy will automatically get called every single time we selected one of our rows. All right. So I'm going to just print out the, uh, the index that was selected. So we'll say print selected row number this. And then we're going to just put in row index just to prove that we can get in there. All right, so I'll go ahead and save that. And we'll run it. And now every single time we click one of those rows, we should get something printed out to the console that we selected a you know row X, Y, Z, whatever, row two, row three, something like that. All right, so we'll just scroll through there, hit go, we're back here. I'll go ahead and click on one of our rows, and we see selected row two, selected row one, selected row three, selected row zero, so on and so forth. So that's how we handle row selections inside of here. And you notice that because we did this in a navigation uh, controller, by pushing it, we can go ahead and hit the back button there, and we can select a different number of megabits per second, hit go, and now it'll convert for a different number. So now we have a full-fledged conversion type tool for uh, um, uh, converting between megabits per second and uh, um, uh, all of our other viable speeds, let's say. Uh, kind of showing interface uh, elements like picker views and table views. All right, so if there are any questions, you can go ahead and type those into uh, um, the question box. I'll hang out for a few minutes here. Um, otherwise, uh, I will... Oh, that's actually completely awesome. Um, okay, so let's uh, stop sharing my screen here for a second. All right, so otherwise, uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste in my uh, email address at Thinkful. So it's mlitman at thinkful.com. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm happy to help. Uh, I will post up a link to the uh, uh, a GitHub for this project in case you want to download it and take a look at it. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing a similar seminar. We're actually going to be doing this on Apple TV programming. Um, so we're going to kind of take the same mentality and look at TV Kit and how programming for TV OS works and kind of see how that goes. 
All right. Well, until next time, I will see you then.